Hello, hello. Welcome to another video with me. My name is Melissa. I am an illustrator and graphic designer primarily, but I have a background in fashion design and just an immense love for astrology. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to build your own corporate goth capsule wardrobe. So just a disclaimer, this is completely just my opinion, my bias. I feel like when it comes to corporate goth, it is actually a very wide range and people can take it into their own terms. They can make it more formal, they can make it more Victorian, or they can take it more minimal and make it more casual. It depends on your career field, uh, where you work, and also just your personal preference. So I remember that I got this comment where someone said, that corporate goth is an aesthetic that we choose to wear, but it's something that we have to wear. And I did make the mistake of, as I recorded this, I kept saying, this is office appropriate. I recommend this because it's office appropriate. And I just want to say that when I chose these items in mind and as I recommend certain aesthetics, it's not because I feel like we have to wear it or it's because it is office appropriate, but I actually do genuinely like this look and aesthetic. I love the idea of a sharp and tailored look mixed with a dark aesthetic. This is not an aesthetic that we have to wear. It could be an aesthetic that we choose to wear even if we don't work in a corporate office. The controversy of the term corporate goth. Okay, so the first time I ever heard the term corporate goth was actually at my first corporate job. They were so casual, um, to the point like it just wasn't my style they wore a lot of like t-shirt jeans and flip-flops which there's nothing wrong with that look but it was very different from what i was used to but there was uh this girl that i worked with and she didn't dress like a dark aesthetic in your face but you could just tell that she also was coming from a very similar aesthetic and i heard her use the term corporate goth and um I feel like how she looks, um, she gave me permission, her name's Michaela. she has an amazing style. Um, how I would describe her look is like a dark aesthetic with a lot of glamour to it, like she's not afraid of animal print and sequins and glitter, so it's like a very glam goth type of look. I did feel like I kind of lost myself in terms of aesthetics and like how I wanted to dress at that job, but I will, I will give it to her, she was a style inspiration in that. Now where the controversy comes in though is the term corporate. So whenever I use this like term on TikTok, I always get a lot of pushback because a lot of people and understandably so find the term corporate very depressing. It's associated with this very sterile environment that almost kind of strips your identity just so you can get a paycheck. And but that's why I like corporate goth. It kind of pokes fun at this idea of corporate. There are some people who argue that they prefer the term executive goth just because it feels like it has, it's at a higher power. Just for reference of why I personally don't mind corporate goth is I feel like the term executive goth feels too high in power, if that makes sense. Like it feels too a bunch of dudes in suits at a table at a board meeting and you can be executive goth, but it just, it feels much more suit and tie, whereas the way I like to dress is, is business forward, but it's not that formal. Let's get to the fun stuff. So let's talk about the basic essentials that I personally recommend when building a corporate goth wardrobe. So keep in mind, this is again my bias, and I'm going to be mainly prioritizing the basics. If you prefer a more Victorian look or something a little more extravagant, add your own flair to it. Um, I just want to give you the bare bones to build off of and accessorize on your own and um, some places that I recommend getting them from. I do prefer something that is a little more on the minimal side when it comes to corporate goth. Just That's just my personal preference. I'm also kind of low-key lazy and I just do prefer a more minimal look like as you can tell when it comes to makeup I also do a more minimal look I just like a vampy lip of sorts but that's my disclaimer all right let's talk about some basics one of the basics that I definitely recommend looking into is tank tops 
I know majority of the time tank tops tend to not be the most office appropriate thing to wear at your work, whether you're a teacher or you work in an office. I feel like if you are in a designer role, in my experience,、um, design and creative careers tend to have a little more leeway in terms of that. Like at my first fashion job, wearing tank tops and strappy dresses was never an issue. But like the job I work at now, I'm a senior graphic designer wearing a tank top to the office. I do work in an office that is not extremely strict, but there are some. Unspoken rules, and I probably would not wear a strappy tank top to the office. Even so, I recommend getting tank tops for a layering piece. I personally love wearing tank tops that have a bit of visual interest, where it has like a slight cutout on the shoulder. Nothing too crazy. I wouldn't recommend, especially if you have a strict office, to have any cutouts that are like on the side. But I definitely recommend. Some kind of tank top with a visual interest of your choice.、Um, I also love sleeveless polos in a way; those are really good for layering. It still has that bit of formality, and it is super fun to dress up. Or getting some kind of tank top with a pattern of your choice. You can do a graphic tank top, but I do think, depending on where you work, kind of teeter totters of something that's a little more casual. I have a bias towards pinstripe. Patterns.、Um, I feel like that looks good in any dark aesthetic wardrobe. So, addition to your tank top variety,、um, I also recommend having your own collection of short sleeve blouses or short sleeve tops. Now, depending on、um, your preference of layering, if you are not a big fan of layering,、um, I feel like layering does take an amount of effort, and you want something just to throw on. Then I would recommend having more short sleeve blouses than tank tops. So when it comes to short sleeve tops, I love retro inspired tops because there is a visual. There tends to be a visual interest in black. It looks extremely sharp and extremely chic. I have a lot of tops from Michelin Pitt that I recommend. I'm going to be showing a more of the long sleeve tops.、Um, The retro reproduction brand Collective also has really good blouses. I love any sweetheart tops. They look really good, especially for my broad-shouldered girls that want、um, a very flattering short sleeve top. Disturbia also has a good variety of short sleeve buttons. Disturbia also has really good, just like any dark aesthetic clothing in that store in general. I'm going to be referencing them a lot, but they also have like good silky. Blouses. I feel like that's also a good way of adding visual interest. That's not just your run-of-the-mill T-shirt. Unique Vintage is also a retro reproduction store that carries a lot of retro-inspired clothing that is in black. I do notice if you tend to get genuine retro clothes, which I'm all for. I just I feel like finding genuine 1950s and 60s clothing. Tends to be on the more colorful side, and if they are in white,、um, they tend to have a lot more discoloration, and they tend to yellow. So, I do opt for more retro reproduction pieces, just because they come in more black variation. Okay, so now for long sleeve tops, which I definitely feel like is something what I prefer to have a more variety of in my closet. I have a lot more. Long sleeve and cardigans in my wardrobe. Personally, having a good variety of button ups, like a black button up, you can get very interesting ones from Collective, where they're not just your run of the mill like button up like this. Like they actually have like a V neck one. I don't own it, but I definitely feel like that can fit into someone's dark aesthetic wardrobe flawlessly. Disturbia also has a good variety. They also have different velvet fabrications. Long sleeves that lace up, and then again, Michelin Pitt. Although it is on the pricier side, the quality is amazing. Lasts many washes. The top that I personally have and will show later in this video is called the Body Blouse.、Um, a similar one that she still has on her site is called the Starlet Top. I like that it's、um, slightly like on the sensual side, which I do like and prefer, but it's not too sensual. It Um, it like cuts off here, and it's like a V neck. Has a lot of draping, and it is a bit on the sweetheart neckline. Okay, next some essentials that you definitely need in your dark aesthetic or a corporate goth wardrobe is cover-ups. So, if you work in a super formal workplace, or if you just prefer that aesthetic, 
um, definitely have some good blazers on hand. If you want something affordable and just like super straightforward, I recommend getting blazers from Muji. They're washable and they come in a variety of silhouettes. Oak and Fort also has some pretty straightforward blazers. They come in, um, their cross front is like a little bit um, oversized silhouette. They also have just like a slim fit or just like a regular fit. I really love Disturbia's um, blazer they have right now. Um, they have a matching pant to it. It is called the Scorpius blazer and it has a scorpion little detail on it. So for me personally, I actually don't have blazers. I thought about getting a blazer for this video just to show you how to outfit it, but if I'm being realistic, I don't like how blazers look on me personally. I feel like this short sleeve works. Um, this is probably the closest I'll have to a blazer. That's why I don't have a blazer, but I definitely think the look of a blazer with a harness looks so good and so sharp and it looks good on a lot of people. It's just not my preference to wear them. I think other cover-ups that I recommend you having to pair with your tank tops that I mentioned earlier is some like sheer or flocked cover-ups. Um, I have this spiderweb one from Disturbia. I wish I can outfit it for you later, but I just can't find it. It's lost in laundry. Disturbia has other good cover-ups. This is the Stevie um, wrap cover-up. I think also it's really good to have your own selection of just plain black knitted cardigans. Uh, Banana Republic is the brand I tend to have a lot of in terms of black cardigans because they last a long time and they're easy to thrift. Okay, so for pants, my favorite part, there is a variety of pants that you can invest in. And also I feel like if you're into the corporate goth look and you're not into blazers such as me, I feel like if you get a nice like um, top and you pair it with like obvious business trousers or slacks, you still give off that corporate goth look. Again, Michelin Pit has a good variety, well not good variety of pants, but the quality of Michelin Pit is just, it's so good. You can also find Michelin Pit, um, I have bought her stuff secondhand. I love Disturbia's pants, actually the two trousers I'm going to be showing you later is their Scorpius pant, which has a beautiful hardware detail in the front and has a scorpion detail at the the bottom of the pocket. Um, the other pant I couldn't find on their website, but it has a very interesting plaid pattern. And I feel like when it comes to corporate goth, investing in these very academic or collegiate patterns is going to look so good and match with a lot of your dark aesthetic pieces that I've already mentioned. And of course, pinstripe. The Serbia has um, a very silky, satiny pinstripe pant right now with the matching tank top that I showed earlier. You can also just look up pinstripe trousers and they're quite easy to find and even thrift. Commence is another place that I feel like has a good variety of business trousers. And what I like about Commence is that some of their pieces has, has um, slight interesting visual interest that you normally find in like high-end brands. Oakenfort is the, is the kind of store though that you kind of have to like keep going back to just because they run out of sizes and colors fast but if you do catch oak and fort at a right time you can find really good sales i got these pleated pants which i definitely feel like could fit into my corporate goth wardrobe seamlessly i got them for like seven dollars so if you follow my tiktok you know that i have done a my favorite corp goth shoe so personally what i have on rotation are three shoes i have a heeled boot um, the highest heel that I'm willing to do, um, because I can run in them, are two inches. I have these leather boots from Target. They were originally 30 bucks. I got them for about 20, 25 bucks. I got these heeled or platform loafers from Marshalls. They're actually Steve Madden and they look great with tights or even by themselves. And then for flat loafers, I wear my coach loafers. They're very easy to slip on. They kind of look like a dupe for the Gucci loafer that I feel like almost every celebrity wears um, or every influencer wears. I do prefer leather over suede though just because they withstand weather way better. Um, I feel like suede stains fast and they take a lot more work to clean. Okay, now let's talk about spicing up your corporate goth look. I gave you an idea of some basics to have um, for a corporate goth look, whether it's just a look that you're into because you like this tailored aesthetic, 
or if you this is something that you just want to wear to be office appropriate but still upholding your dark aesthetic look again there are so many ways to go about it so again it depends on your lifestyle so for me i'm a graphic designer i have a little more freedom when it comes to what i wear like for example i've mentioned many times on my tiktok that my favorite formula is to wear anything in my closet and then add a harness belt to it but i have seen in some of my comments that um like college professors harnesses as a college professor is like a big no-no or we have abby from ncis and she wears her goth wardrobe but with her coat and that's like her way of still being like office appropriate some other examples of some content creators that also embody a corporate goth look there's a lot but the ones that i um, reference a lot my lovely mutual chelsea her um this is her socials i'm sure if you're familiar with the corporate goth look you'll already have been familiar with her what i love about her corporate goth look though is that it's a very designer forward she wears a lot of great luxurious pieces that you can tell they are investment pieces i love thrifting pieces um but a lot of the pieces that i have been thrifting recently because of the variety that i've been seeing is there's a lot of shein and cider at my thrift stores and i do like some of those pieces i'm not gonna lie i have these shein pants that i got originally from goodwill and that's just the reality of what some of our thrift stores look like and even though it was nice to get five dollar pants um because they were originally from shein the likelihood of it lasting is not going to be the same as chelsea's isamiyaki pants so that's something to keep in mind and i like how she shows variety a variety of ways to outfit these designer pieces and shoes another good corporate goth example is chloe hurst um she does actually wear more things that have that incorporate skirts more so if you're more into that that's something that I definitely recommend you checking out her page as well. All right, I have to talk about what a lot of people like to hear on my channel, and that's how does astrology come into all of this? Um, this is going to be a small segment. I actually talk more about how your midheaven plays a huge role into what you can wear on a professional level, but that was my video last week. Um, but definitely check it out if you're interested. I'm gonna break it down by elements though. And this can pertain to whether it's your sun sign, your midheaven, or if this is just the dominant energy element that's in your chart. For example, I'm an Aries sun and a Sagittarius midheaven, but majority of my chart besides those is all water. So I'd probably be a mix of water and fire. So take this information however you will. It's very personal. I feel like if you have a dominant fire energy in your chart, the corporate goth wear that I would associate with you guys is having pops of red, whether it's having a very bright red vampy lip, um, incorporating like dark bloody red trousers or a blazer is something that is a little more experimental and a little more sensual. I love good harnesses. I feel like there are some more experimental and much more bold type of harnesses and I feel like that's very fire energy. The kind of corporate goth look that I would associate with a very high intense um, earth energy is a nice silky dress of blazer and knee-high boots. Kind of very like a goth Victoria Beckham in a way. And also something that has it still harnesses but in a very stabilizing way like the hardware on the harness is not as flimsy and it's a little more um bold so i picture like the same idea of a blazer with a harness but the harness feels very structured and very armor like i feel like when it comes to air signs it's something that can be um, adaptable to a day and night outfit so i have mentioned before when it comes to gemini's and even libra's the outfits i associate with them is very very goldilocks like somewhere good in the middle so good flowy pants can work um, i think the tank top cardigan is like the perfect air sign corporate goth look, and definitely nothing too stuffy or restricting for any air dominance water sign energy is also very flowy um, i definitely associate with a more ethereal look so kind of like um, a silk dress with like a cozy sweater on top with 
um, like maybe black kitten heels and maybe a little more ruffles and like water-like texture blouses, like something very um, like chiffon-like. Uh, last but not least, let's show some outfit examples from my closet. So again, my bias is I do tend to wear things that are a bit more on the minimal side. I um, don't like thinking too much about my outfit. I want something that I could just throw on. And in terms of makeup, this is like my everyday look, just like a straight eyebrow, a little bit of mascara, and then like a plummy lip and then jewelry. So the ideal capsule wardrobe number, it is recommended for not just a corporate goth wardrobe, but just any capsule wardrobe is 14 outfits. Um, the amount of garments though that create the 14 outfits is completely up to you. Like I mentioned, if you like layering, have more tank tops and cardigans. If you don't like layering, then maybe majority of your 14 outfits are tops. Um, so for me, I'm just going to be showing you five outfits to show Monday through Friday. And for my pants, I only have three pants and majority of the differences are going to be in the tops and then I have one dress. All right, so for this first outfit, I'm going to be showing you what I am already wearing. So I am wearing a thrifted button up that I got from Goodwill. It has a very 80s silhouette and based off of the fabric, it does feel like it's from the 80s. But when I don't have it paired with a harness, it does have a bit of a frumpy look. So I definitely love wearing it with a harness. It still feels office appropriate. For pants, I actually just have very simple run-of-the-mill H&M slacks. I don't have a name for it. H&M um, has a plethora of slacks that you can choose from. And then for shoes, I am just wearing my platform loafers that I showed earlier in this video. Okay, so for my next outfit, I am finally showing the famous Michelin pit top that I keep referring to. This is the body blouse. So what I like about it is that it has a very flowy sleeve, which I recommend if you have a lot of air or water in your chart, but anyone can wear this. But what I like is that it has an open neckline, great for soft natural kibbies or soft dramatics. The Disturbia Scorpius pants, like I mentioned, it has a very cool scorpion detail. And my favorite thing about it of why I actually bought it in the first place is the this almost like belt buckle detail. I don't know how to fully show this, but the pant is very wide-legged and I have to wear it with platform heels or platform boots. Otherwise, the pant is just dragging along. Also, I'm five foot two. And this is what the pant looks like. Okay, for my next piece, my theoretical Wednesday piece, I would just throw on this simple black top I got from Target. Again, open neckline is always gonna be something I prefer. And what I like too is that it has a bit of a split on the sleeve, so it adds a bit of visual interest, and I let the pants do the talking as my statement. And again, when it comes to these pants, I'm always going to be wearing platforms or a heeled boot. I think this would look really good with these pants as well. Um, well, I have worn them before like this. I don't really change out my jewelry or accessories often. Like, I've been wearing my Vivian Westwood ring. Um, some sort of gunmetal or black necklace lately. But yeah, on to the next outfit. So next, I want to show you a hypothetical Thursday outfit at my old job. Thursdays tend to be like meeting days because Fridays, everyone wanted to leave the office early. So I would opt for my more formal boot just because it has a sharper look to it. Um, I would not wear this alone. It kind of gives like, I'm going to go get cocktails if I wear it by myself. But then, bam, you put a cardigan on and all of a sudden it feels slightly more office appropriate. And last but not least, so I'm going to be pairing my Friday outfit with my coach loafers. And I'm just wearing a super easy top to throw on. I got this from Nordstrom Rack. Proof that you can get your corporate goth outfits anywhere. Um, this is just like a nice black tie-up blouse and I have it paired with some Disturbia trousers um, that I got a while ago. A little bit of a shapeless outfit for Friday. But again, if something feels a little shapeless, add a harness. It just sharpens an outfit. Did I just make this long video just to tell you guys everything is solved with a harness? No, it's, I mean, it's different for everybody, but that's the formula for me and hopefully 
this helps all of you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great week. Bye.